Praise God, for God is worthy of all the praise and the honor. And today we're going to discuss decision making. Wow. Everybody's talking about Mayweather and Patio fight on Saturday. Many people are saying it wasn't a fight at all. I watched the fight. And you know, it's interesting for me to be a former fighter and soldier of God. In a way, I was disappointed because I hadn't seen a fight since Muhammad Ali. Because you know, Muhammad Ali was an entertainer. But Mayweather came into the ring looking humble. He was so humble, I had really thought all the fight was out of him. What I saw during the fight was how Mayweather calculously strategized to win this fight without getting his face torn up. And I, you know what? I got to give this man credit. Many people say he has made so much money from this fight that he could retire. And I'm praying that that has happened. Because you know, once everybody gets paid, the fighter is the one that does not have enough. And so they have to go back into the ring. But I like this man's strategy. He made a decision that he was going to use his head and not his head to win this battle. And sure enough, he did it with style, with grace, and with class. His opponent wanted to box, but Mayweather said, I'm coming out of here whole. And that was demonstrated by the last round. He was able to shake his opponent's hand and smile at the camera. He won a decision fight. And that just shows us we have to stop the violence. This man made sure that he's not going to be like Muhammad Ali, like Foreman, like Tyson, to have any neurological problems. And so he fought a clean fight. I'm sure a lot of people are disappointed, but you know what? I'm not. And I hope the young people today understood what this man demonstrated today. And that is that we must use our heads and not our hands to bring about change in America. And we must make decisions that line up with the whole counsel of God and decisions that are in the perfect will of God. Only then can you live a life of perfect peace. And that's what basically we all want. As you look on the screen, you see chess pieces. And the queen has the king in check. Now, you and I both know the queen is right there in front of the king. And if she doesn't have protection to back her up, that king can just take it and snatch that queen right up off the board. But we know a good chess player makes sure that before he checks a king, especially with his queen that closely, she has to have another piece that will ensure that that king 
cannot touch that queen. Amen? And that is part of decision making. So the game of chess is a great way of learning how to make the best decisions possible. You know, we have some great chess masters and they play um, chess for money in tournaments. And those are great minds at work. They strategize and they also um, know the art of war because that's part of playing the game of chess. Discerning the will of God. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. You, I remember playing that um, game when I was a kid. Through the ages, children have played this simple game of deciding whether someone loves them or not by plucking petals from a daisy one by one. The last petal supposedly reveals the answer. But what an unreliable way to make decisions. And just as unreliable is making choices based on changeable circumstances or the cries of a crowd. Wise decisions are made by discerning the will of God. And God delights in revealing his will to those willing to do his will. And his will is clearly revealed in his word. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. James 1.22 and I know some things we just repeat because it's so important. I come into contact with people on a weekly basis who appears to make poor decisions. And they're making the same decisions over and over, getting the same bad result. And they don't know how to get out of that loop. We make decisions every day. Many are of little significance. A fruit will change our lives forever. Do you make quick decisions by doing what comes naturally or do you struggle with delay because of a paralyzed or analyst? Many bad choices are made in life because we do not take the time to discover God's perfect will for our lives. Be assured, God doesn't play hide and seek as you try to discover his will. The more intimately you draw close to the heart of God, the more clearly you will know the will of God. And as you sincerely begin to place his desires above your own desires, he will be faithful to point the way. Let this be the prayer of your heart. I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is within my heart. And that comes from Psalm 40 and 8. Amen. What is decision making? Making a decision is a process that includes making a choice or judgment about an attitude or action. Decisions are an act of the will, and they are always influenced by either the mind or the emotion. The Old Testament Hebrew word Abba, which means to breathe after or to or to be used to indicate a willingness to accept or comply. Your decision receives God's blessing when you are willing to obey God. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. Isaiah 119. The Greek word karino rhino, is one of the many New Testament words that can be translated to decide. This Greek word means to distinguish, to decide mentally, to determine or resolve. Your decision should be based on what you know to be God's revealed will. As for the Gentile believers, we have written to them our decision that they should abstain from food, sacrifice to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality, Acts 21-25. Another Old Testament Hebrew word, bakar, which means to select, is also translated to prefer or desire. Your decision reveals the desires of your heart. I have chosen a way of faithfulness. I have set my heart on your Lord. Psalm 119 and 30. 
Your decisions are ultimately determined by what you desire the most. The fundamental principles for each of us become, do I choose to please myself or do I choose to please the Lord? But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, 15. What is the meaning of will? Like a prim, the word will reflects many different sides. When making a choice, you are communicating your will. The word will is also used to express the desire or mandate of someone having authority. God reveals his will. Another meaning of the word will carries the idea of having a disposition to act according to one's desired goal. A child may be born with a strong will. Further, by use of your own will, you can exercise power and control over your own actions and emotions. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but your will be done. Luke twenty-two forty-two. Question. What did Jesus mean in Matthew 6.10 when he prayed to the Heavenly Father, Your will be done on earth as it is, as, as it is in heaven? Answer. Jesus modeled a heart of submission to the will of his Father because he knew God will, would ultimately be best. The meaning of the following Greek word used in the New Testament describes why God's will should always be preferred. Selma means a determination, choice, or a desire of the heart. God's will is his heart's desire for you. Bulima means a plan of the mind, a deliberate design and purpose. God's will is his ultimate plan and purpose for you. Yudoka means good and pleasing. God's will is ultimately pleasing and good for you. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6 and 10. What is meant when scripture referred to the will of God? Scripture referred to a three-dimensional picture of the will of God. Perfect, permissive, and prevailing. God's perfect will. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will, Romans 12 and 2. God has an ideal plan. God's plan is pleasing and good. Example, God's perfect will is for everyone to repent of sin and for no one to perish. The Lord is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. 2 Peter 3 and 9. 2. God's permissive will. They hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. Proverbs 129. God permits each person to exercise free will in opposition to his will. God is ultimately sovereign over all that he permits. Example. God permissive will allow everyone the option of choosing right or wrong, spiritual life, or spiritual death, being blessed or being cursed. This day I call the heaven and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. Deuteronomy 30:19. And it's interesting that when you actually spell it out, blessings and curses, how people cringe. They don't want to hear that, you know. And because it's in the Old Testament, they think, oh, that's in the old book. That's not what Jesus preached. But you need to really sit down and research what Jesus is saying. He is basically saying the same thing. He has not changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament, brothers and sisters. Amen. Three, God prevailing will. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Proverbs 19.21 God's plans cannot be thought. God's ultimate purposes are achieved because he is sovereign. Example, God's prevailing will is to grant full forgiveness 
and a home in heaven to all who repent of their sins and trust in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thought. Job 42 and 2. Now, why is it we can go into the Old Testament and pick and choose things? Pick and choose things that we want to follow or not follow. <clears throat> We're talking about decision making. So, you know, that's part of the decision making process. Whether or not we are going to adhere to the whole Bible or just the Old Testament or just the New Testament. That is an individual decision. But in talking about good decisions, there's a chain that you can see here. And it's a method of going about making good decisions. Useful information is one thing you have to have in order to make a good decision. You need sound reasoning. Also, commitment to follow through in whatever decision you have made. You need helpful frame. and clear values. What about creative alternatives? Because part of making decisions means that somebody may not agree with the decision you made. So you need an alternative. That's a way of negotiating with another person. Because remember, Anytime we're making decisions, although we may feel that the decision is for ourselves, other people are involved in the decisions that we make, either inadvertently or directly. Amen? What are common questions about the will of God? Question, has God already determined his will for me? Answer, yes, God's will for you was prepared in advance. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Ephesians 2 and 10. Question. Can I actually know God's will for my life? Answer. Yes. God desires to reveal his will to you in a personal way. The God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will and to see the righteous one and to hear words from his mouth, Acts 22, 14. Question, how do God reveal his will? Answer, God reveals his will primarily through, one, the Spirit of God. When he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come, John 16, 13. And this is why a lot of Christians are going to hell. And I have to say it like that because what ends up happening, many people hear God's voice verbally and they still do what they want to do. Many people read the word and the word jumps at them to give them answers and they still do what they want to do or they listen to other people when God is specifically speaking to you. So here in John 16:13 it showed us that when we don't do what the Spirit tells us to do, because the Spirit is going to actually talk to you one way or the other. When you are in a dilemma and you have to make a decision, the Spirit does speak. And that's why we are to wait for the Lord. Amen. The Word of God. Your Word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path, Psalm 119, 105. And, you know, I say that, brothers and sisters, 
because it never fails. You know, God will send me to people with a message and it either will be a confirmation or it will be a message that God hasn't given them yet. But most of the time when God sends me to people, it's already has been said to them. They know it. I'm just confirming God's will for their lives, you know. And it's sad when you go there to confirm the word and they said, well, you know, you're the second person that said that. That's not good because that means you haven't actually abided by the first word. Amen. And that means you're falling short. And too many people are falling short of God's grace. Because I can say this personally. Once he has given you his word. And he'll give it to you once. And he'll give it to you twice. And he'll give it to you for the third time. But once he gives it to you the third time. And you don't adhere to the word. You're going to reap what you sowed. That whatever it was. That decision that he told you. To do or not do and you don't do, you will reap what you sow. Amen. Because these things are serious. There's some things that he tells us that are minute. It's just a test to see where you're at in him. But then there are times when he is telling you things not only to test you, but other people's lives are at stake. By the very thing he's telling you. And you're supposed to take heed to him. So. Question. Will God reveal the whole blueprint of my life? Answer. Only God sees the whole picture. The past, present, and future of your life. Discovering God's will is like reading a scroll. He teaches and consults you as he unrolls the scroll one day at a time. And he does this so he doesn't overwhelm you with what is about to happen in your life. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eyes on you. Psalm 32 and 6. Question. What if God's will seems undesirable? And I'm sure that has happened to many of you because it has happened to me. Answer. God's will may seem undesirable. And unpleasant when your heart is following your own desires and not trusting God. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 37 and 4. Question. Why does God's will for me sometimes include sorrow and affliction? Answer. Suffering allows you to see God's sufficiency as you learn to depend on him. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. Psalm one nineteen seventy one. Amen. Now there are some decisions that are pleasing to God. Decisions that He initiates. I instructed I instruct you in the way of wisdom and lead you along the straight path. Proverbs four eleven. Decisions that line up with His word. Direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. Psalm 119, 133. Decisions that accomplish his purpose. It is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Philippians 2, 13. Decisions that depend on his strength. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Philippians 4, 13. Decisions that result in giving him glory. Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to add this to this because the Holy Spirit just brought this to me. God once told me that a husband that does not listen to his wife does not listen to God. And that goes back to, as I'm thinking about it, Peter. 1 Peter 3 and 7, where, and I believe it's 1 Peter, it's either 1 Peter or 2 Peter, where God is telling the husband, you know, 
to take care of his life and do the will of God for your prayers to be answered, you know, or I'm saying for your prayers to be answered, but the Bible says so that your prayers will not be hindered, amen, decisions that promote justice, kindness, and humility, what does the Lord require of you? to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Malachi, Micah 6 and 8. Decisions that reflect his character. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers to speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. 1 Timothy 4 and 12. Decisions that come from faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Hebrews 11 and 6. Decisions that consider the interests of others. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the other. Philippians 2 and 4. Decisions that are bathed in prayer. Prayer continuously, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. So, brothers and sisters, based on everything we are discussing at this time, you can see I'm summing up a lot of information that we have already covered in our lesson. Amen? So what is God's heart on decision making? God's heart in decision making is to help us with our decision. God emphasizes with our struggle. He is eager to lead us according to his infinite wisdom and perfect plan. None of us knows what the future holds. At times we truly don't know which way to turn. But when we seek our all-knowing God, he never fails to direct us down path for our good and for his glory. And again, I can testify to this, because if it wasn't for God, I would have never went to school to become a nurse, to be a theologian. It just wouldn't have happened. In my family, getting an education was not important. And education is important for everyone. Praise God. Consider what an indescribably awesome privilege it is that the God of the universe, the creator of billions of galaxies and even more stars, cares about your decision concerning your health, your job, your marriage, your children. He longs to help you with all of your decisions. There is no need to fear that something is too small or insignificant to take to him. If it matters to you, it matters to him. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Psalm 121, 1-2. God's heart on decision making as it relates to him, eager. He is eager to help us in our times of need. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep water. Psalm 18, 16. Sympathetic. He is sympathetic when we experience strenuous circumstances. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Psalm 43 and 5. Move. He is moved when we trust him at all times. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Matthew 8 and 10. Determined. He is determined to use opportunities of uncertainty to deepen our fellowship with him. When hard pressed, I cried to the Lord. He brought me into a spacious place. Psalm 118 and 5. Attentive. He is attentive to direct the circumstances of our lives in accordance with his perfect plan. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. 
Psalm 143 and 10, willing. He is willing to tap into his unlimited resources to widely guide our lives. Counsel and sound judgment are mine. I have insight. I have power. Proverbs 8, 14. Faithful. He is faithful to lead us all the days of our lives, even to your old age and gray hair. I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. Isaiah 46 and 4. Generous. He is generous in granting wisdom to us if we ask for it in faith. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who is who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you but when you ask you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind that person should not expect to receive anything from the lord james 1 5 through 7 god's heart on decision making as it relates to us it's sincere he wants us to sincerely seek his well, he desires, he wants us to desire his will above our own. He's patient. He wants us to patiently wait for a word from him. And he always looks. He wants us to look to him to speak to us through his word. Amen. He's approachable. He wants us to approach him with an honest heart and a clear conscience, and he values. He wants us to value the counsel of his word above the counsel of people, and he wants us to wait. He wants us to wait until his word and the prompting of his spirit are in agreement, because then we know it is the right timing, and connect. He wants us to look to the circumstances in connection with his word, the spirit leading, and our peace of mind. Amen. So brothers and sisters, God loves us and he wants the best for us. Plenty of people are putting in their two cents, but it's all adding up to a lot of confusion. You have an important decision to make. And in the midst of swirling opinions, you're left scratching your head about what to do. Your best friend says one thing and your spouse says another. But have you considered what does God want? Do you know how to overcome procrastination and peer pressure? How to overcome causes for clouds of confusion? Do you know God's promises for guidance? Do you know how to develop spiritual discerning? Do you know how God reveals his will? God delights in helping you navigate your way through the big and little decisions in your life. He desires his best for you in all things as he unfolds his perfect plan. His plan is perfect, not ours. Doing things God's way also leads to blessing and deter you from decision-making methods that can prove to be harmful to you and to others. And I will leave you with that on this day. Father, we thank you for helping us understand decision-making just a little more clear. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you. And we thank you for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen, amen, and amen.